In this video, we're going to begin looking at electrolytes and define a lot of terms relating to their chemical potential and activity. So an electrolyte is just a substance that ionizes nearly completely whenever it's dissolved in solution. And often we're talking about aqueous solution because water is a very good ionizing solvent. So when you dissolve electrolytes, you create uh, ions. So you create a cations and anions, and those will interact very strongly through Coulomb's law. So because of those strong interactions between the solute particles, they're going to behave non-ideally, even at very low concentration. So it's going to be especially troublesome to think about what the activity is for electrolytes. And in this video, we're going to find some terms relating to that and then look at, at more quantitative detail what the uh, activity ends up being in the next video about Debye-Huckel theory. Okay, so if we have some dissolution process for some electrolyte, we have our cation X and our anion Y, and they each have stoichiometric coefficients here, nu plus and nu minus for how whatever this could be. If this is NaCl, nu plus and nu minus are both 1. If this was H2SO4, then, eight, then nu plus would be 2 and nu minus would be 1. If this was CaCl2, we would have nu plus is, is 1 and nu minus is 2. And then these dissolve into ions. You get nu plus moles of X, and it has a charge of some integer times nu minus, and it is positive. And then you have nu minus moles of your anion Y, and it has a negative charge whose magnitude is some constant times nu plus. And I've just added in this constant here, Z, for the cases where, um, for example, if you have uh, both of them would be dications, then uh, it wouldn't be just their stoichiometric coefficients up here. It would also be a factor of 2. But that's beside the point. The point is we're, we have nu plus moles of cation and nu minus moles of anion. Okay, so we can define a chemical potential for our electrolyte. Mu2, 2 being the solute, as it has in this series. We're going to have equals the constant nu plus times mu plus, which is the chemical potential of the cation, plus the constant nu minus times mu minus, which is the chemical potential of the anion. And we know also from other definitions that we can define the chemical potential of the solute as its standard chemical potential plus gas constant times temperature times natural log of its activity. Okay, and then in terms of the chemical potential for each of these individual ions, we're going to have that mu plus equals mu plus naught, its standard chemical potential, plus RT log activity of the cation. Let me stick that plus in there a little bit better. And for the anion, the chemical potential of the anion mu minus is its standard chemical potential, plus RT log activity of the anion. So we've defined chemical potentials and activities for both the cation and the anion. And now in terms of these chemical potentials here, all, all of these substituting them into this first expression, we end up with something that looks like constant nu plus times log of activity of the cation plus stoichiometric coefficient of the anion times log of the anion activity is equal to the natural log of the activity of the solute, of the whole electrolyte. Okay, so then using these definitions, if you take the exponential of both sides and then do some algebraic rearrangement, what you can end up with is that the activity of the solute is going to equal activity of the cation to the power nu plus times the activity of the anion to the power nu minus. And then this is also going to equal 
the mean activity coefficient, we're going to call a plus minus, to the power of nu, where we're going to define the constant nu as nu plus plus nu minus. Okay, so our activity of our solute is each the activity of each ion raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient. This here is actually incorrect, so let me erase that for a second. Put that back. Make sure that's nu minus as it should be. Okay, so that's fixed. So we have and then we have this new coefficient here, which we're going to define as the mean ionic activity, which is somewhat different than the activity of the solute. Mean ionic activity. Okay, and then we can define uh, activity coefficients as well for each of the ions. So we're going to have A plus its activity is equal to its molality times its activity coefficient. And similarly for the anion, the activity of the anion equals the molality of the anion times its activity coefficient. So I'll write both of those down as well. Mi is the molality, and gamma i is the activity coefficient. Okay, so in terms of these molalities and these activity coefficients, we can substitute that into this expression here. And what we can get is that the activity of our electrolyte solute is equal to the mean activity coefficient to the power of nu, which is equal to molality of the cation to the power of nu plus times molality of the anion to the power of nu minus times the quantity activity coefficient of the cation to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient times the activity coefficient of the anion time to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient nu minus. So this means that we can also define a mean ionic molality just as we've defined a mean ionic activity, A plus. And we're going to define that in the following way. We're going to have M plus minus to the power of nu which is the sum of both of those coefficients, is equal to molality of the cation to power of its coefficient times molality of the anion to the power of its coefficient. And <clears throat> as I said, m plus minus is the mean ionic molality. molality. Okay, and in the same way, now we have our mean ionic activity, we have our mean ionic molality, and these activities are defined in terms of molality. So we're going to have similarly a mean ionic activity coefficient. So that'll be lambda plus minus, and that to the power of nu, sum of both of those coefficients, is equal to activity coefficient of the cation to the power of its coefficient times activity coefficient of the anion to the power of its coefficient and gamma plus minus as I said is defined as the mean ionic activity coefficient but do that better coefficient. Okay, so in, this, in the way that we've defined our osmotic coefficient before, if we, for uh, non-electrolyte solutes, the natural log of the activity of the solvent 
was equal to, and then for the standard case of a non-ionic solute, that would be minus molality of the solute times osmotic coefficient times the molar mass of the solvent. But now we have to add in an extra factor here because instead of just having one particle for every particle of solute that we dissolve, we have new particles. We have new plus cations and we have new minus anions. So we actually have to add in a factor of new here and this will affect our osmotic coefficient, it'll affect our activity coefficients, and it'll affect our colligative properties in terms of our when we have electrolytes in our solution. So the natural log of the mean ionic activity coefficient is calculated in the same way we would from a non-electrolyte in terms of its osmotic coefficient, phi minus 1 plus integral from 0 to that molality of phi minus 1 over m prime integrated with respect to m prime. And that's the same as before, but what's new now is the fact that we have this extra factor in there. So that's going to change that's going to scale what our osmotic coefficient is by a factor. And also because of these very strong interactions, it's going to deviate from ideality at much lower concentration. So our osmotic coefficient is going to deviate from one at much lower concentration. So in terms of our colligative properties that we discussed in the previous set of videos, in terms of electrolytes, we have our freezing point depression equation is minus nu times freezing point depression constant times the molality of the electrolyte. So there we get the extra factor of nu because instead of there being one particle for every particle dissolved, there are going to be new particles, nu plus plus nu minus. And then also for the boiling point elevation constant elevation equation we have plus new times the boiling point elevation constant times the molality of the electrolyte and then finally for osmotic pressure if you have an electrolyte generating an osmotic pressure across an osmotic gradient across a semi-permeable membrane then that colligative property is going to be the osmotic pressure is equal to new times the molarity of the electrolyte times RT.